This is Crumlin's most famous landmark, Our Lady's Children's Hospital. A mere 30 years ago, the grounds of Crumlin Hospital and all the surrounding area was all farmland, farms and market gardens, supplying the city with its fresh vegetables. And at the heart of it all was the old village of Crumlin, a fine old village with a history going back hundreds of years. Well, things began to change in the 30s and 40s as the great housing schemes crept out from the city and people who lived in the inner city were rehoused in places like Crumlin. But the villagers were suspicious. They called the newcomers schemers. And to say the very least, the schemers and the villagers had a healthy disrespect for one another. But that was until a strange building sprung up across the road from here, bringing old and new Crumlin together. Because there in the dark, villagers and schemers sat side by side, enjoying moments of magic. Well, uh, well I reckon I can. I can try. Well, there's a long tunnel through the... The Star, of course, is no longer a cinema. For a while it was a bingo hall, and after that it became a roller skating rink. And now... It's a snooker palace. Well, it's sad to see old cinemas closing down, and I'm sure when the star closed, it affected the people of the Crumlin area, from the lowliest punter in the front row to the biggest movie star. Gabriel, you started coming to the star when you were about eight. Was it tough around here in those days? I don't remember it as being tough, you know? I really don't. Though looking back on it now, I suppose it was kind of a, a, a tough area. There were a lot of tough guys around. I remember one particular bloke who was the, the terror of Crumlin, who was a a small little fella who used to wear Cuban heels before Cuban heels ever came into fashion. And um, his presence in a cinema, uh, you know, just his appearance would be enough to, 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 to electrify the thing, you know. And uh, he used to get people in the pictures, you know. That would be the threat, you know. We're going to get you when the start on Saturday. When it was dark. Yeah. And then I remember once a friend of mine, <coughs> Started his first job and he bought himself as a as a tree. He bought himself a new uh, car coat. And this guy, the little guy, the hunchback guy, came in and sat behind him. And all we heard was this voice saying, "Give us the knife, kitty." And then, <laughs> and I got you terrified to move. And then just very slowly, he cut into ribbons your man's uh, car coat. That was things like that. But I mean, it wasn't anything. I mean, there was no gang fights or anything like that. You know. Did you have any intimations at that time that you would ever wind up on the big screen yourself? No, never. Do you never. remember your first movie? Who brought you to your first movie? Uh, my first, the first movie I ever went to was with my, my grandmother who, uh, who lived in Clontarf. And um, she was an old Joycean type woman who, who used to get, get me to read to her from books. But more than anything else, she loved, uh, she loved going to the pictures. And I'll never forget the first moment when I walked into a, to a cinema. Uh, past the guy in the, you know, the red uniform, and we walked into this room which was just full of noise and sound and light, and uh, I remember a ship was just passing across through the dark as we went in. I, I'd never seen anything like it, and I was hooked from from there on. But I never thought I'd ever end up on the screen ever. In fact, I remember once passing by um, St Patrick's Park. I was on the Mitch from school. And I saw them making a film called Quacks of Fortune as a Cousin in the Bronx. And it was Gene Wilder's first film, I think, or second film. And he had to eat an onion sandwich in St. Patrick's Park. And, uh, well, if he had it once, he had it 20 times. And I stood there, I remember saying, God, how can they do this for a living? But uh, that's what I'm doing for a living now. Gabriel, what do you remember of old Crumlin and the kind of characters that were here? Well, just beyond where Crumlin ended, um, at that time uh, the country began and um, a road wound from beyond, beyond the village uh, through farms and fields which eventually reached uh, up as far as Tala. And um, there was um, a lot of uh, characters who were around at that time who disappeared with the, uh, with, the spread of, with the spread of housing. One of the guys I remember was a fellow called Sackman Sam who used to dress from head to toe in sacks and used to wear on his head a kind of a cowl effect made from a sack from Boland's Mill. And he had a long black beard which came down halfway down his chest. And he, was, he always had an armful, of, uh, an armful of books. And women, the mothers used to bring in their children and warn them that if they weren't good that they'd be given to the sackman. So we used to watch the sackman going up, up the road through hedges and from windows and uh, to see whether he actually had any babies from Crumlin or Drimna in the sack, you know. And I remember um, with my mother going uh, to collect milk in the evening times uh, in the winter to this farm where also 
um, the Jews of Clan Brassel Street and and uh, and Kimmage would also come to collect their milk, and they would stand there in this farm in this farmyard with long black beards and Hamburg hats, white shorts buttoned at the collar, speaking this strange language, and then they took their milk and they went away back to uh, to Clan Brassel Street and to um, Kimmage. That's all gone. The farms are gone. The broken castle where the sackman used to live under in his tarpaulin tent is gone. Um, and what, what's tragic about it is that uh, we had the advantage of being able to go into the country and at 10 minutes the other way we were in the city. But in those estates today, there are no facilities like that for kids to escape. Uh, no physical environment that develops the world of the imagination. It isn't there. There are just rows and rows and rows and houses. 